Now let us return to the imaginary plant cell used in our example to see what happens when the glucose and oxygen produced by photosynthesis are used to make new ATP in the crucial reactions that comprise aerobic cellular respiration. In our plant cell, glucose and oxygen travel out of the chloroplast and into the cytoplasm. Here, the first stage of cellular respiration begins with a series of reactions called glycolysis. Glycolysis begins as glucose is broken down into molecules of a simpler compound called pyruvic acid. This releases free energy. The free energy is used to bond two ADP molecules to two molecules of inorganic phosphate, yielding two molecules of ATP. Next, the pyruvic acid passes into a minute cellular organelle called a mitochondrion. The many mitochondria embedded in the cytoplasm of each cell may be called the powerhouses of the cell, for it is within these organelles that most of the cell's energy-rich ATP is produced. In the mitochondria, pyruvic acid enters a series of reactions called the citric acid cycle. In eight steps, assisted by enzymes, pyruvic acid is broken down to form hydrogen atoms and carbon dioxide. More energy is released, which again is harvested to form two more molecules of ATP. In animals, including human beings, the carbon dioxide will pass out of the cell and eventually out of the body. But in our imaginary plant cell, this carbon dioxide may be used again in photosynthesis to form more glucose. Next, the hydrogen created during the citric acid cycle is delivered to the inner membranes of the mitochondria, where it enters a final series of reactions called the electron transport system. This results in a huge energy payoff, for the electron transport system yields an enormous dividend, 32 new ATP molecules. The electron transport system also causes oxygen to be bonded to the hydrogen released during the citric acid cycle, and water is formed. The net result of all the complex reactions that comprise aerobic cellular respiration can be summed up as follows. A single molecule of glucose, when combined with six molecules of oxygen, will release enough energy to cause a total of 36 ADP molecules to be joined to 36 inorganic phosphate molecules, resulting in the production of 36 new ATP molecules, plus six molecules of carbon dioxide and six molecules of water. For our study, we have looked at cellular respiration in plants. But cellular respiration is found in virtually all living things. Cellular respiration in plants and animals typically requires oxygen and is therefore called aerobic cellular respiration. Aerobic refers to air or oxygen. But some organisms, notably yeasts and certain bacteria, can carry out cellular respiration and produce ATP without oxygen. These organisms use a related process called anaerobic respiration. An means without, so anaerobic means without air. Whether aerobic or anaerobic, the goal of cellular respiration is the same, the production of vital ATP. ATP is indispensable because living things cannot use glucose directly to energize cell functions. They must use ATP. ATP may be thought of as a sort of money or currency that is spent by organisms to pay for the work that needs to be done to stay alive. Whereas glucose, starches and fats store energy, like money saved in the bank, ATP is like money in the pocket, chemical money that can be spent whenever it is needed inside of cells. 
In this program, we have witnessed a beautiful cycle of nature. Photosynthesis, creating glucose merely from water, carbon dioxide, and raw energy. While cellular respiration uses the oxygen and glucose from photosynthesis to create ATP, releasing carbon dioxide and water back to photosynthesis. And through these remarkable processes, nearly all life on Earth is nourished and sustained.